Hello and welcome to this presentation for Civil Engineering and Construction Management MSc uh, at the University of Derby. I'm the Programme Leader for the Civil Engineering Construction Management MSc and also for some of the undergraduate provision in Civil Engineering at Derby and my name's Derek Spolton. Just to give you a little bit of background about myself, uh, I worked in industry for over 20 years, predominantly in the highways and drainage. Um, and I'm a Chartered Engineer through the Engineering Council. I'm very active with professional uh, bodies and sit as Regional Chair uh, for the Chartered Institute of Civil Engineering Surveyors and I'm a Committee Member um, for the Chartered Institute of Highways and Transportation as well as actually sitting on several of the academic standard panels um, and I'm an Engineering Council reviewer. Uh, my general area of research and study is into infrastructure assets, uh, modelling and design. Yeah. Your academic team is quite broad and you've got a lot of professionals with different uh, aspects of civil engineering and construction that will be delivering new modules. Um, I specialise in the transportation area on the MSC and also the geomatics, which is the 3D modelling, laser scanning, etc. Uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Justin Steele-Davis, he is shown in this image here. He actually supports students for their independent studies. Um, Stomatus Zohar is a professor uh, and he looks after independent studies and research methods modules. Omar Hamza, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Hamza, is our geotechnical specialist uh, with a lot of research in slope stability. Um, Herbard Vasarte is our flood risk and looks after hydraulic engineering. John Thorne looks after CPD, which is the strategic management module. And Rosemary Horry looks after the environmental planning module. There are other modules uh, that are taught and we utilise uh, associate lecturers to support some of the specialist modules. But with any module, you should have a subject specialist supporting you. So why study civil engineering online? Well, it can be used for you to actually go for an individual assessment for working towards chartered engineer to ensure that through an individual assessment you can meet the requirements of the academic entry to becoming a chartered engineer. So it allows for your career, career to progression. Um, it covers critical issues that are faced in the industry and as I speak today there are continually developing and uh, moulding our modules and there is a push to put more sustainability within our modules across the board as this is now becoming a predominant issue in the industry. It will give the opportunity to work and learn about real life world projects and a lot of the assessment is actually scenario based. Um, and we also have the benefit coming to Derby that you're getting a 100% overall satisfaction rating from the 2020 postgraduate teaching survey. Um, this team is strong both ac academically, uh, but we also have the benefit that almost every single person that we're delivering to you has got industrial experience and has worked in industry. Um, and the programme also is accredited through RICS and some other um, professional bodies, the Chartered Institute of Civil Engineering Surveyors. And we are currently working on accreditation with the uh, Engineering Council for the Joint Board of Moderators, which includes the ICE. The programme itself can be taught in sort of bite-sized chunks. So if you don't want to commit yourself to the full three years of part-time study, um, what you do have an opportunity to do is to do 60 credits of study per year and you can actually sign up to them in step stages as you're moving through the programme. So in the first year you can actually sign up and do the Civil Engineering and Construction Management Postgraduate Certificate, PG Cert, uh, and that will cover some of the underpinning uh, basic uh, modules that are core to all the programmes. Um, then you can move on to second year and pick up the remainder of the core modules and some of the options and then you'll be at the point where you've reached the Civil Engineering Construction Management Postgraduate Diploma, uh, PG DIP. And then in the final 
sort of year of study, um, you'll actually take on, because the, the independent study is 60 credits, so you'll take on those 60 credits in one go, uh, and over the year you will complete your independent scholarship. And if you do all of those stages, you can do them bit by bit, or you can do them as just do the MSc from the word go, that will lead at the end to a recognised master's qualification. So we've got a little map in here um, that shows you how sort of the years work. It does depend when you start, and we are fortunate that we actually offer starts both in the traditional September intake at the start of the normal calendar academic year, the January intake, and also May. Um, but this is just an example of sort of how the modules map through. So in year one, you would do uh, environmental risk and responsibility and research methods. Um, and then in the second trimester, you will take on your project planning value and engineering risk management module, which is 20 credits. And then over the summer, which will be your third trimester of year one, you will do your continuous, continuing professional development and research management module. Yeah. Then moving into year two, you would then do your flood risk engineering, which is also a core module. And then you would do your option B um, module, depending on where you're starting from, depends on which cycle you are with the options. Um, and I'll explain a bit more about the options in a minute. And then in the summer, if you wanted to pick up an option in the summer, you could do something from the option pool C. Um, and then in the third year, if you've already taken your two options, then you wouldn't actually, you'd go straight on to your independent study. But if you haven't taken both of your options, if you've still got one outstanding, you can select an option from option pool A. Um, I will point out at this point as well, anything that's selected from option pool B, that does include a couple of modules that require residential study. So they are short blocks of residential study um, and it's typically between three to five days um, and accommodation is provided um, when you're doing that study and I'll also explain a little bit more about that in a moment. Yeah, so um, this just shows the accelerated route that you can actually do. So some students opt to do this and they, they it follows the same plan except you're doing 40 credits per semester. What we usually do, and you can see this model allows that, is we require students who want to go on the accelerated route to start off on the standard route and do the two 10 credit modules and look how they're performing and managing with their time at the end of that first trimester. And then if, if everything is in place and they've got the time to do the study, we can then accelerate them to doing 40 credits online per um, module per per trimester, yeah, which actually just pulls everything close together. Um, and again, actually, it's not quite as it seems here because if you do your two options from pool B and pool C, you can actually be um, halfway through your second year. You can be uh, undertaking your independent study. So the pools for the options currently, as they stand, because this is always being reviewed, we're, we're re reacting to market demands, etc., and developing new modules as we go through. But our current pool, from pool A, is a BIM and Integrated Project Collaboration module, which obviously is, its name says is, is about building information modeling uh, and communication um, and project management within the construction industry. Alternatively, there is a negotiated module However, I will point out at this point that that negotiated module uh, requires any candidate doing it to have suitable work, a working practice that they can base their study on. Um, and generally, we prefer people to do the uh, standard taught modules rather than the negotiated module. Um, but that would be something you would discuss with your programme leader nearer the date when you're considering your options. In the option pool B, we have our geomatic uh, asset, uh, geomatic monitoring asset engineering module, and we also have our sustainable construction methods and materials module, and for new for 2023, we have our advanced geotechnics module. 
Now, the geomatics module and the um, new module in geotechnics, both of those have a requirement for a residential. So just be aware of that if you're looking and you are looking from coming in from a far away country with COVID, etc. Can you actually come in for the dates that the residentials sit on? This could actually make a decision whether you decide to opt for those modules or not. Whereas the sustainable construction methods is taught wholly online. In the Pool C, we have transport infrastructure. Uh, and engineering module and a negotiated module reappears. So again, that's sort of giving you an options. So pool A and C are sort of sitting on the outside of the options with the main options sitting in the pool group B. The titles may differ slightly from what is shown on screen. Yeah. So whilst you're studying, are you going to actually achieve some real world skills? Well, the real world learning is with our UK and overseas students is residential based. And what you can see is a student from a couple of years ago who actually did a project with us that was residential in Scotland. Uh, and actually we um, did a 3D model of the Falkirk wheel. And you can see the student here in his full PPE actually running a laser scanner to actually make a 3D model of the Falkirk wheel. We also do other areas where we go out with the geomatics module and we've scanned uh, the Norfolk coastline with master student groups. Uh, we've also scanned tunnels and viaducts on the Monsell Trail and we're always looking for new and interesting projects to go and make 3D models of. Because the advantage with this particular module is that it actually involves writing health and safety risk assessments, method statements, etc. So you are effectively doing the role of a practicing professional and you're given a real life project. So it is real world learning. Um, and the same with the geotechnical engineering uh, module. That one, when that starts in 2023, will actually require you come in, you'll stay somewhere in Derby, and you'll be doing lab work and probably getting some soil samples from in and around the Derbyshire area, and be doing some lab testing, triaxial testing, and calculations and determinations of slope stability. And it may be actually linked into doing some surveying to ascertain where something isn't, isn't moving in the uh, real world. So you're teaching and learning, and uh, what you'll find is the resources are broke up, each module is broke up into a number of units, and depending on how it's been written, those they can be 10 units in a module, or there can be five units in a module. But a single unit uh, from a 10 unit module is estimated to be around 20 hours of, of work, including the activities you do. And what you'll find is that there'll be a mix of, as you can see, this is just some shot stills from a couple of modules. So you'll have, um, there'll be hyperlinks where it says source materials, etc. So when you click over that, it will be interactive. We also use uh, some text, directed reading, um, use of images, videos, um, and also uh, interactive videos that support your learning. So for example at the moment in the geomatic module um, there are videos there on how to use the software but there are also videos of practice and um, previous surveys that have been done with direction and transcripts to help you prepare for your residential work. So you will be part of a global student body so you'll be actually, could be working with students from anywhere in the world. Um, we do have quite a lot of students who come from the Middle East, um, Southeast Asia uh, and the African continent, um, as well as a lot of students who are utilising the fact that they don't have to commit to day release and regular periods of study um, in the UK. So. You, you've been mixed up with quite a, a broad spectrum of students and the nice benefit with this particular program being civil engineering and construction management is that what you'll find 
is that you'll actually also be mixed from people with quite diverse industrial experience. So from a site manager, contracts manager, um, somebody working in the supply chain, right through to somebody on the design, a civil engineer, a geotechnical engineer, uh, a surveyor, quantity surveyor, land surveyor. You'll, you'll have a diverse people in your group and through the discussion boards and some of the online um, uh, lectures that are sometimes available you'll actually be able to interact with these people so it is it's quite a broad spectrum of people that you'll be working with yeah um, as I've already said not only do we have the benefit that we're able to um, learn from the diverse staff that we've got and your colleagues or peers in your academic group but we also get professional uh, people to come in and contribute to the teaching team so from time to time you might have a recorded guest lecture um, questions and answer sessions you might have an assignment that's set where there's a real client who comes in and actually sets you the brief for the assignment uh, and we utilise guest speakers. These can be guest speakers from other academic bodies, from professional bodies, or even from um, trade bodies, where we're looking at the roles of new materials, for instance. Um, and this also allows us to link into real-world case studies. So the projects you'll often be doing will actually be based at something in the real world. Uh, majority of those projects, however, will be UK based uh, with the nature of the course with the university being based in the UK. But you will be able to take those skills that interconnect between modules um, to enhance your learning overall. So the, the aim of probably doing your MSc is to transform your future. So if you are successful in the course, this will allow you to progress your career. Um, in the, all the different fields and it gives you effectively any civil engineering construction management qualification is effectively a multidisciplinary qualification so it will sit in for geotechnical engineering, commercial management, education, general management it opens the doors up to lots of areas for you to explore for your career it works as a stepping stone towards registration with professional bodies um, and as I've said at the moment, there is accreditation for certain ver certain professional bodies have accredited the online course, and we are at the moment seeking accreditation for other aspects of the, the course with other professional bodies, and as they arise and are uh, granted, we will advertise that to you, um, and hopefully some of these accreditations will occur before September, so if you're enrolling in September, you will be on an accredited programme. Yeah, and probably one of the biggest drivers for people to develop their academic skills and broaden their interests is to improve their future earning potential and also the improve their continuity of work throughout their working career. So the virtual campus, yeah, you'll get guidance at the start of on how to use the resources. Um, and how how to interact with the different aspects, discussion boards, etc. But you'll also be given effectively a, a created a space to work in the virtual world. So you'll have a study space, a place where you can also upload and store your own materials, your coursework, etc. As you're working on them, so they can be accessible for, on different devices at different times of the day. Yeah, they need to protect around 20 hours a week if you're doing a standard method of study uh, to actually sit down and study. When you go through a unit, you can probably through, read through a unit in no more than an hour, um, probably some even slightly less. But typically, the, the, to read from start to end of a unit, they could be 20 or 30 pages long. Um, but within that embedded, there are lots of activities. So there'll be uh, several embedded activities, some 
elements where you'll need to have pause for thought and contribute to discussion boards, etc. And then at the end of each unit, there will be uh, an activity or an assessment for the end of each unit. And what the aim is, is they will support you and build up to your end of module act, uh, assessments. So they are fed back on by your tutors, but they are not necessarily your fight or grading. They are basically stepping stones along the way. It, see it as working tutorials if you're used to working in a normal academic environment. Um, you'll have regular engagement interaction with your peers and the academics through the online forum. Um, and you can check your learning uh, through the portals, look for announcements, set yourself up so your emails, when an announcement's made, it emails you so you'll know that something else has been added or that something's been put on discussion board so you can link to them. Um, and throughout the each trimester, things will be updated and, and additional res resources may be provided. Um, so it might be a bit of additional video or it might be that the lecturer links one of your lectures to a live lecture on campus, makes a recording of that and makes that recording available to you. Um, so from time to time as well, lectures will actually allow you to join the on-campus lectures as a virtual student um, and that gives you the opportunity to ask questions as the lecture is actually happening. Uh, but that's not it. Not done as a, a for every single unit, or it's not done at every single um, in every single module. But look out for that because that's a great addition to the resources. Um, and making it work for you as well, you need to think about leaving a suitable time to do your assignments and not trying to rush them in the last minute. Because the deadlines you're working on a ten week cycle for a module and the deadlines do come around quite quickly if you're not keeping on top of your work. Yeah. So in the online community, we use a, a different bunch of ways of working. Uh, we find that discussion forums are really good. Um, what will often happen is it will allow you to work with your peers. Questions will be raised um, generally by your tutor, but maybe all the peers could raise questions in that forum. Um, and then they are monitored and feedback is provided where necessary from the tutor in each of the modules. Um, certain aspects when you're managing things through the UDOL platform require you to actually deal with uh, different departments via email and you'll be given a university email address uh, and for personal confidential matters you can use this email and you should be getting a response typically within two working days. But I put two working days there because you need to be aware if you make a request on a Friday afternoon um, in the UK time, uh, you should be expecting an answer to that sometime on the Tuesday. Uh, don't expect to, to count the weekends because um, the weekends obviously are not working days in the UK. Um, and then Blackboard Collaborative, live live sessions are available, questions and answers. Um, what you'll find is that lecturers will actually set up a collaborative Blackboard uh, meeting, invite people into it, and then there can be questions and answers. Uh, they can be quite interactive. They could be linked to PowerPoints, etc. Uh, and from time to time, you might want to use telephone or virtual meetings. Uh, with the current pandemic, we're seeing lots of people now migrating over to um, meetings that are based around Teams. Yeah, uh, You'll get uh, academic support from your program lead, your module leaders, module tutors, and your personal academic tutor. Each person who studies at the University of Derby is assigned a personal academic tutor. You'll also have access to online learning advisors for non-academic support. And as a student at Derby, you'll get student services such as the wellbeing, the library that is stocked with lots of virtual uh, e-books, the careers and the union of uh, students. Um, you'll get one terabyte of cloud storage, access to Office 365. Um, if you're using something like AutoCAD and you don't have that, you can actually get an academic 
at license for AutoCAD and other packages. Um, and the portal itself for students as a virtual learning environment is open 24 seven. But obviously if you're interacting with certain people, you need to uh, work around the standard sort of working day, nine till five, Monday to Friday. I've mentioned the library. If you actually are fortunate enough to come on campus, we have a four story um, library. Uh, we actually have two libraries on the in Derby. So we have the main library at Kettleston Road site, and then we have a satellite library at the Britannia Mill site, uh, which has its one floor of uh, library, so it has less book stock. Um, but the online reading lists are available. Online books and journals can easily be accessed. Library services are available to you, including loans, uh, access to journal papers, etc. Um, the Library Plus service, when you're inducted, you'll be given guidance on that. Uh, and the library also do live sessions that are available and recorded, so people can understand what facilities are available for the library. Um, within each module, you'll have um, some guidance on core reading, but you'll also have quite extensive referencing at the end of each unit, so it'll give you guidance on where to go, and that will also include links to online publications uh, and documentation. Yeah, uh, And our students, it's really pleasing to see at the end of every academic year and the cycle that our students actually come over to Derby even though they've been probably working remotely around the UK or in other countries and they come over to Derby and they celebrate their success when they graduate uh, with uh, a graduation ceremony um, that this year has been running June, July um, and November as well um, and as you go through your studies, you'll be told once you've completed your studies, each of your different levels that you complete, when your graduation is, um, and you'll have pl plenty of time to organise flights and accommodation to come over and celebrate your success. Yeah. So, what are the next steps? If you're interested in studying uh, an MSc in Civil Engineering and Construction Management online at the University of Derby, uh, what I'd advise you to do is to check the website for the entry criteria. Uh, it's typically a UK or UK equivalent uh, undergraduate degree at uh, 2-1 or higher, um, but we do actually take on board and look at issues around uh, working practice and experience and we can also look at other qualifications mapping together to get to there. So don't just rule it out if you don't think you meet the general criteria contact somebody, get some ideas, um, and they'll be able to tell you when you actually apply, whether you'll actually be granted or whether you'll be guided to do a little bit more study before you start your master's course. Um, you'll also find on the website information on the course fees. Uh, we offer payment plans, so you can actually pay in stages. And it will also tell you, if you go to the website, which is derby.ac.uk online, it will tell you when the next intakes are. So as I'm recording this, we're looking for people who are watching this, probably going to be on an intake in September 2022. Yeah. So if you've got any further inquiries or anything, please do contact udollinquiries at derby.ac.uk. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to wish you, your families and your friends uh, to be stay safe and well and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at the University of Derby.